Hello and welcome to StatQuest. StatQuest is brought to you by the friendly folks in the genetics department at the University of North Carolina in Chapel Hill. Today we're going to talk about RNA-seq technical replicates and answer the question, do we need them? And the answer is a resounding no, not if we have biological replicates. You may have heard that answer before, but you might not know why. That's why we're also going to answer the question, why not? Just to warn you, this stat quest gets a little mathy, but trust me, you can understand all of it. It's simple and I walk through it step by step, so just bear with me. It'll all make sense in the end. When we do high throughput RNA sequencing, there are two main sources of variation that we get in our data. The first source of variation is biological variation. No two mice will have the exact same number of RNA transcripts, even if they are genetically identical. This could be said about anything, from humans to fruit flies. There's also technical variation. Each time we do an experiment, there's so many little factors involved, including some that are 100% random, that is impossible to get the exact same results twice even from the same organism. To understand how these two sources of variation can affect our results, we're going to start with an example in which there is only biological variation. That is to say, for the time being, imagine we can do RNA sequencing without any technical variation. Here, we're going to plot read counts for an imaginary gene X for several different mice. For this example, the exact number of reads per mouse isn't important, just the difference between replicates. Thus, the y-axis isn't labeled with numbers. Now we've plotted the read count for gene X for our first mouse. Now we've plotted the read counts for our second mouse. Since there is no technical variation, the difference in read counts is only from the biological variation between the two mice. Here are the read counts for a third mouse. And here are the read counts for a bunch of other mice, so many that we haven't even numbered them all. Now, if we had an infinite budget and an infinite amount of time, we could sequence every single mouse on the planet and get an average for all mice for gene X. In this example, we'll use the Greek letter mu to represent the average for all mice. Now that we've calculated mu, the average for all mice, we can quantify the biological variation for each individual mouse as the difference between its read counts for gene X and mu, the average. In this example, mouse number one has five more reads than the average read count and mouse number two has one less read than the average, and mouse number three has four more reads than the average, mouse number four has two more reads than the average, mouse number five has five fewer reads than the average. Okay, this is getting tiring. Let's imagine we only did five samples. We can now formulate the read counts for each mouse as mu plus the difference from mu. Why we would like to do this will be seen shortly, so just hang on. Given our new, fancy formulation for the read counts for each mouse, we can use them to calculate the average read count for gene X from the five samples that we've collected. To calculate the average, we do what we learned how to do in fifth grade. We add up the five measurements and we divide by five. In this case, the measurements are fancy formulations for read counts. Now, I'm going to show you what happens when we shuffle the numbers around a little bit. First, I've shifted all the mu's to the left side of the numerator and all the differences from mu to the right side of the numerator. We can now split the equation into the sum of two fractions, the mu's divided by 5 plus the differences divided by 5. Here we've just combined the addition of the mu's into a simple 5 times mu. When we do this, it's obvious that we can cancel out the 5 in the numerator 
and in the denominator. Once we cancel out the fives, we see that the average is mu plus an additional fraction. Because the numerator of this additional fraction contains both positive and negative numbers, they're going to cancel each other out. That makes this fraction get smaller and smaller the more samples we add. This is one reason why when we estimate the mean with a small sample, that estimate gets better and better the larger the sample gets. And after a lot of samples, all we're left with is mu, which is exactly what we're interested in finding out. Now let's consider what happens if we have both biological variation and technical variation. To keep things clear, we're going to label the biological variation with an orange color. Here we have orange lines indicating the difference between the read counts and the average. We're also going to label the technical variation with a green color. For the first mouse, the technical variation reduced the read count by two, so we're going to give it a green arrow pointing down. The second mouse had technical variation that increased the read count, so we'll use an arrow pointing up. And here we see the effects of technical variation on all five mice that we sampled. Just like before, we can represent the read counts for each mouse using a fancy equation. Like before, we've got mu plus the biological variation, but now we also have the additional technical variation. We can use these fancy formulas to calculate the average. Now we can break that average up into three fractions, one for mu, one for the biological variation, and one for the technical variation. And just like before, because the numerators contain both positive and negative numbers that cancel each other out, with more samples, these variation terms will go to zero. At long last, we're going to see what happens when we do technical replicates. First, let's just imagine that we had one mouse that we did five tests on. Just like before, we're going to indicate biological variation with an orange color. And just like before, technical variation will be indicated with green arrows pointing up or down, depending on which way the technical variation influenced the read count. Now let's calculate our averages. As we can see with the biological variation, the numerator only contains the number five over and over and over again. There isn't a mixture of positive and negative numbers that could possibly cancel each other out. And what we're left with is mu plus five, the biological variation, and a fraction that represents the technical variation. Because the numerator and the technical variation has positive and negative numbers that can cancel each other out, it'll go to zero but the biological variation will stay constant at five. Now let's compare biological versus technical replicates. As you'll recall, when we have biological replicates, the average read count for gene X equals mu plus two fractions, one for the biological variation and one for the technical variation. Because these fractions contain both positive and negative numbers in the numerator that cancel each other out, we know that both of these fractions will get smaller and smaller and closer to zero with each additional sample that we add. Thus, the final average read count will tell us something about all mice. When we don't have any biological replicates and only technical replicates, then only the fraction representing the technical variation will cancel itself out. This leaves our estimate for the read counts as mu plus the biological variation, which only tells us about the single mouse that we sampled. Thus, this experiment only tells us about a single mouse. It's unlikely that this result will be replicated in any other lab. What if we do biological and technical replicates? Can we get the best of both worlds? Unfortunately, the answer is no, and I'll show you why. Imagine we have two technical replicates for mouse number one and three technical replicates for mouse number two. Just like before, when we calculate the average read count from our sample, we get the average, mu, plus the two fractions, one for biological and one for technical variation. However, look at the numerator for the biological variation. 
If we add additional technical replicates, not biological replicates, we won't converge on zero. If we do add additional biological replicates, it will converge on zero, but it'll take more replicates than before. In this case, it'll take three times the replicates, since the terms don't cancel each other out as quickly. Let's examine how much slower the convergence is. Since we did three technical replicates for mouse number two, with three technical replicates, we'd need 15 samples to get the same term as we did with five biological replicates. As you can see on the left side, this is what we had when we had five biological replicates. It's equivalent to this long fraction on the right side. So now let's compare all three different types of experiments. Experiments with just biological replicates, experiments with a mixture of biological and technical replicates, and experiments in which there are only technical replicates. The worst possible scenario is to not have any biological replicates and only have technical replicates. This is because our result will only tell us about the single mouse that we studied. It means that our results will not generalize, meaning no one else will be able to replicate what we've done. It's still pretty bad when we have a mixture of technical and biological replicates. This is because if we don't do enough biological replicates, we'll end up with an average read count that is equal to mu plus a constant, which is only representative of the sample at hand. Or, if we do enough biological replicates, we'll have to add so many extra copies of them. This takes more space on the sequencing machine and costs more money. The best situation is when we have lots of biological replicates. When this happens, both variance terms go to zero the fastest. So when we use our sample to calculate the average read counts for gene X, we end up with an unbiased estimate of mu, the average for all mice. This is a value that could be reproduced in any lab all around the world. The moral of the story is, use as many biological replicates as you can. If you use technical replicates, you run the risk of biasing your result, because the biological variation term won't go to zero nearly as fast as it could have. All right, folks, that's it. Tune in next time for another exciting stat quest.